Tanya Krishna from FinancialExpress.com and today we have with us Mr. Rajat Kurana who is Managing Director A6 India. Welcome Mr. Kurana. Thank you Tanya, thank you. So first of all, we'll move uh, straight to the consumer part of the business. Uh, so during the lockdown, during the pandemic, a lot of uh, uh, the buying behavior, the consumer sentiments, everything changed uh, drastically, uh, I would say. So uh, elucidate or elaborate on the evolving consumer behavior and new trends in the segment in terms of how they are preferring to buy, what are they preferring to buy, or what kind of experiences they are look, uh, really looking for. And how is the company adjusting to this? Uh, Tanya, 2020-21 was the year uh, nobody experienced before. 20 was the year of pandemic. Uh, the stores were closed uh, more than what they were open during that part of year. 21, again, the first the first quarter uh, of when we, when we started uh, assuming the things are back to the normal. But 21, again, the second wave of pandemic struck the nation. And the first quarter, I would say, rather the second quarter, April, May, June, was very bad, with again the number of daily cases touching up to more than 400,000. Uh, again, the, the retail stores are closed. But uh, after that, 2021, I would say the second half of 2021, now I would say the, the we could see the traffic returning back to the uh, stores with the vaccination on the full drive and also with some, I would say, the... Uh, the main reason for the traffic back to the stores, especially our stores, was the performance-related products. During the pandemic, uh, people learned the importance of uh, fitness in their daily lives. And I would say uh, that was the prime reason for the that momentum to be there. And that momentum continued in the year 2022, the first half of 2022 from Jan to June. We have been experiencing uh, even the, the footfalls have been higher than the pre-pandemic levels. And we have we have witnessed the demand for the performance product have uh, uh, increased exponentially uh, after the uh, the pandemic. That uh, the reason maybe the the people becoming more health conscious than that way the uh, consumer has changed. Then again another phenomenon which we have noticed is the people shifting to the uh, digital medium. So youngsters you know, try to shop online. So digital was one of the factors which also contributed to the growth for our uh, business prior to pandemic uh, in terms of to quantify in terms of numbers prior to pandemic the digital business used to contribute 25% uh, uh, of my total business okay. which has now uh, touching more than 35% of my total business in the year 2022 may it may touch even 40% i believe by the end of 2022 Interesting. Um, so when you said, uh, mentioned performance category, um, we want to go a little deeper into that. Which categories uh, among your footwear range or your apparel range, uh, which is most in demand currently? And what percentage of the overall sales come from that particular product? No, I would say running is the fastest growing category for us. One reason is predominantly we are a uh, running dominated, performance dominated company organization globally. We are the leaders in the running segment, I would say. That also is one of the factors. So more than 50% of the sale, I would say, uh, of my total sales, 55% of the total sale is contributed by a performance uh, running segment. Followed by, I would say, uh, after running would be the core performance sports like tennis, Tennis is another category which we have been witnessing a, a rapid uh, exponential growth uh, after the pandemic. The tennis is another category uh, which is growth. Then followed by tennis would be cricket. We have a very strong uh, uh, products for the cricket. So that is the I would say the three biggest categories for me: running, tennis, and the cricket. Yeah. And how is the company um, planning to expand in terms of retail presence or even product categories? Uh, if there are any plans in that side. In terms of Tanya, Mono, Mono stores, uh, the partner Mono store, we have now uh, 74 plus one will be opening this month. So we'll be touching 75 this end of this month. Okay. And uh, uh, this year, in the next seven months of this year, we will be opening 10 to 12 more stores, taking the total count to approximately 85 by the end of uh, December 2022. Uh, in terms of the multi-brands, uh, where we have a presence, there are more than 700 point of sales across India, which is a multi-brand sale, which is all across the uh, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 cities. Even the mono stores, I would say, uh, 
more than 20% of the mono store now are in the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities of india uh, so you would you say uh, your uh, large customer base resides in tier 2 and tier 3 three cities and not in the metro cities no i am saying this 20% so we we started opening our stores in the metro we have delhi mumbai bangalore uh, we have presence in this last two years we have been witnessing uh, the when we track our data for phone.com sales 30% of the sale uh, is coming from the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities in the last two years and which has actually uh, resulted in uh, prompting us to open the stores in these cities we we understand the demand of our products coming from the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities also and that is the reason the last two years i would say more than 10 12 stores were opened in the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities of india be it lucknow or dehradun or the ahmedabad or rajkot and then kanpur so we have stores in these tier 2 cities too yeah and we we get a uh, good uh, revenue generation from these areas yeah yeah that is the reason so the demand of the products has been very okay. strong the but the average price point of the product is slightly uh, lower than uh, what is is being achieved in the metro cities but the demand of the products has been quite strong yeah um are you also exploring new uh, kind of retail channels um or changing how you are selling uh, right now any any plans on that front so i mentioned uh, one of this is digital media which we sell uh, 35% is more than 35% of the sale is now achieved from digital we have been strengthening our digital business we have been investing in digital in our resources in digital and uh, i assume in the next 3 uh, Yes, I we fifty percent of our sale will be contributed by, by digital medium. So fifty percent will be digital and fifty percent will be offline. Yeah. And uh, how do you see franchise as a model for expansion, uh, retail expansion? Uh, and are there any plans to cut down on the franchise side of the expansion and open more company-owned uh, stores going? No, it is not about uh, Tanya. The cut down the franchise model. It will be a combination of. Uh, so in the in the years to come yes the brand will have a couple of or uh, stores in the major cities of india to display the world of asics to the our consumers it will be more like a shopping experience to the consumers we will have a combination of uh, uh, franchise stores and uh, and company stores the the idea behind the company stores is to uh, a brand to showcase the brand in a bigger way to the to the consumers and while we continue to work with our franchises we have developed a strong relationship with our partners in the last 4 5 years who are expanding and then it is a win win situation for both of us yeah uh, and in terms of manufacturing or sourcing uh, what percentage of your overall portfolio uh, are you know sourced or manufactured in india and are there any plans to increase uh, that percentage in the time to come yeah so we have we have uh, substantially increased the local production in india uh, in the last few years be it a footwear or apparel so we do both footwear as well as apparel so i would say we have done a good job in uh, we we believe in make in india initiative we have done fairly good job in terms of the local sourcing so in terms of percentage uh, tanya it would be i i would say in terms of percentage this year 2022 jan to december uh, we will touch uh, both footwear and apparel club together around uh, more than 23 24% 25% around we touch yeah. which region in terms of uh, north south east or west which re- region brings in uh, the maximum uh, revenue for a6 india and any plans to uh, the focus tanya is all about uh, uh, it is very difficult to calculate the region in why the reason being mono store yes it is easy to calculate the time kind of the revenues we generate but when it come and on also own dot uh, com sale also we can we can just gauge uh, the the amount of sales from the each region uh, but when it comes to the online sale when we sell to the pure e-com players like amazon or the mentras uh, so it is very difficult for me to identify which which region it is being sold to but uh, overall the market for sports now i would say east so we started with mumbai marathon which is in the west so mumbai was one of the at one point of time the biggest region for me 5 years back the western part of india but we have now considerable presence in the north and the south also so i think in terms of uh, these three regions must be 
almost equal now. Uh, the, the the southern part, the west, so we have equal number of stores. You say south, I have more than 15 stores in the south or 20 stores. North and upper north also 20, 25. So it, it is more or less the number of stores are equal. So I, I it is very difficult for me to classify which region works. But overall, for any any sports brand, uh, otherwise for any sports brands, because the the north and the west are the very big markets for any 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 of the sports brand we talk about, yeah. Um, and in, in terms of competition, how do you see competition in this segment in India? And uh, what are your strategies to you know stay ahead of the game? Yeah, so uh, every every other every single brand, be be the the, the other four, three four brand which have a majority of a stake in India, uh, they have their own brand positioning. Hmm. Like some of the brand work on only on the ethylager, majority is ethylager. A couple of brands, they work mainly on, uh, uh, you can say, performance. Some of that brand works on the live stack. For us, the uh, brand positioning is more of a performance. Plus, we have core performance sports, as I mentioned. The, we are very strong in tennis or cricket. And then we do a 15% of my sale also comes from ethylager. So if we, you could talk about my business proportion, I would say 55 would be performance. Uh, and then 20% comes from core performance sports. And then 15% comes and then apparel is there. So for every brand, the positioning is different. But my aim to be in terms of competition, we aim to be number one uh, running brand in the next two, three years, three years maybe. Yeah. And uh, in terms of, so digital marketing is doing, uh, uh, you know, has taken over the traditional marketing strategies. So uh, how are you re-strategizing or um, taking up the digital marketing strategies? Are you using content marketing or conversational marketing? Yeah, how, so yeah. all the, so digital is one thing which uh, all the brands I would say are focusing on and we are no different. Uh, because of my, as I mentioned, uh, we aim to do a, 48 to 50 percent of my sale digital in the next three years so i need to invest in digital marketing so digital marketing has an advantage of uh, it is it is more dynamic and it has the marketing advantage reaching out to the more number of people in the shortest possible time unlike the traditional ways of marketing but every then again it doesn't mean that traditional marketing will just go away no it is all yeah it is it doesn't mean so it even it depends upon uh, tanya the the now the youngster they prefer to shop online so that way is they, they they are only on the social handles like instagram marketing youtube or facebook but when you come to the tier 2 some of the tier 2 tier 3 cities still those uh, traditional uh, marketing prevails it all depends upon the uh, the dynamics of that particular market uh, for a city so some of these regions they still do traditional marketing or it is a mix of traditional data so our strategy is to target the right audience with the right medium so that we can generate a maximum uh, return of investment and reach the maximum number of people in the shortest possible time. So it, the strategy is different. It is no unified strategy all over India. It depends upon the kind of the audience, the kind of the city we do. Yeah. Uh, but, and what kind of investment uh, do you put in for uh, digital marketing strategies per se? So it is when, when we talk about the digital marketing, first of all, we have to invest in our brand website too the brand website the, so that the consumer uh, uh, gets a good uh, shopping experience it is all about the shopping experience which has been experienced in the brand this is one then is when we when we market on the marketplaces like amazon or the flip cards of the world it is the investment we do with the uh, where the amazon the flip card with the banners and all during the end of season sale and then uh, we we utilize our brand ambassadors digitally also we signed up with tiger shop we signed up with ravinder jadeja posting on their social handles so this kind of the digital investment we do uh, where you cannot give me a number on the uh, kind of investment. I cannot give you a number, but overall marketing spend, Tanya, it is around, um, we spend around out of our total sale, 8 to 10% is earmarked for the marketing. And then based on the sale number in a particular channel, we earmark the marketing budget on that. Yeah. Right. And uh, so uh, talking about the company's performance uh, the previous year and your outlook for uh, the year 2022. Uh, can you elaborate on that, Khan? Yeah, look, as I mentioned, the performance have been quite strong starting this year also. And I'll be, I'm confident that uh, we'll be uh, growing by around, uh, by the end of this year, 25 to 30% over last year, we'll be growing across all the channels uh, with the performance driving the growth and the e-com, uh, the digital sale driving the growth. 
uh, going forward, the outlook for the next two, three years also looks uh, positive, uh, which indicates the strong acceptance of our products. The new season uh, trade show just commenced. We just finished the new, uh, the next season trade show. And the, the order book also remains very strong from our partners. We have developed good uh, relationship with our partners and the order book looks quite strong even next year. Yeah. Uh, around the price hike, uh, the commodity price hike, the cost uh, price hike, the inflation, uh, are we going to look at a, a considerable or any kind of price hike in the coming months from E6? Now, there has been uh, inflation pressure on uh, for all the brands, as you know, Tanya, the, the rise of, it is not only the raw material increase price, it is also the uh, shipping cost, the logistics cost and the oil prices, everything has increased. Which has, uh, which is putting the uh, pressure on uh, the, uh, the the I would say the pressure on the cost for be it a footwear or a apparel, any 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 product. Uh, I don't uh, I don't pass on we don't uh, uh, pass on all the price hike to the consumers, but we'll absorb some of the price hike. But I would say some price hike is inevitable. It it has to happen. And uh, the, from the next season, there will be a slight, slight increase in the prices too. Yeah, it will not be all across the uh, products. I would say, depend upon the uh, uh, the the raw material of the pricing. But overall, if you talk about few of the products, uh, um, so I don't. Uh, 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 so it would be around mid mid price to high price model, around five to seven percent increase price increase. And, uh, and uh, since uh, you mentioned ASICs do not, uh, you know, the brand does not really pass on the uh, inflationary pressure or the cost pressure uh, onto the co uh, consumers. So how are you, what are your strategies to maintain the uh, margins? So I mentioned, you know, I will, we are not planning to pass on all the price increase to the consumers. There will be a slight price increase, as I mentioned, five to seven percent, because we are all we, there is, we are also facing the exchange rate, as you know, for the import, the, the rupee to a dollar. Now it is around 78, 79. So the imports become costlier, and the raw material is becoming costly. So we are so, but I also think that increasing a price to a, a reasonable range of five to seven percent for a, a high performance product, people don't mind uh, paying five percent extra for a good product. I think which is which is there. So in that ways, I think it is. Uh, so I can't. I'm. What I'm trying to say is, we are not passing on all the price hikes to the consumers. Uh, so that was all I think. And uh, thank you so much. Oh, and, thank uh, you, Tanya. Thank you.